the scar being addiction, um, before that wasn't necessarily a happy time because my childhood wasn't necessarily the best. Um, I mean, I had, you know, abuse and, um, you know, I was really upset and really depressed all the time. Once I graduated high school, I uh, went to a rave with a bunch of friends and met a guy and he introduced me to heroin. And I ended up getting on heroin after that and then doing meth for like a good seven, seven and a half years. Childhood is also considered a scar. It's just a different kind of scar um, than the addiction. So they're more of a two scars built together that I had to heal from. During the heavy parts of my addiction, that whole time was pretty hopeless. It was, I was trapped in a cycle where I was just, I would go out, try to make money to get you know, the drugs to get the next fix. And it was just the same thing over and over again. So it was kind of like a cycle of hopelessness that just, I finally needed to break. I noticed how bad I was manipulating people, how bad I was taking advantage of people. And I didn't care, I didn't think about it at all. And it just, it wasn't who I felt I wanted to be, who I was inside. Um, the drugs just kind of take over and turn you into somebody that you're not, you don't want to become. And you take advantage of people who are trying to help you. You know, you absolutely just destroy any relationship that you're having with anybody because the only thing that matters is that next fix. When you see that you're just destroying all these people and all these relationships and you have nobody to turn to and you are all alone, that's kind of the point where I hit and I was like, okay, I need to do something, I need to fix something, or this is just gonna keep dragging me down or I'm gonna, I'm gonna end up dying and this isn't how I wanna be remembered. When I first started my story on Scarred Beautiful, my older brother wrote a comment on there saying that if I ended up getting clean and if I end up leaving the guy that I was with, that I would have a place to go and he would be there to support me. So I always remembered that um, and then when I actually did get clean, I, I called him and I was like, so hey, <laughs> remember when you told me I could come move in with you? And he was like, oh yeah, okay. <laughs> so I got a rehab and then he came and picked me up and helped me get all my stuff from where it was at at my now ex's place. I think that was like the seed that was planted like in the back of my head. Like I knew I had somewhere to go if I ever needed it. So that kind of, pushed me into the direction that I needed to go. I didn't really have any hope, but at that point it was trying to get day by day, trying to just make it through the withdrawal, the recovery. At that point, you're just trying to make it from day to day. Um, I started to feel hope, hopeful once I actually got out of rehab and moved in with my brother and my sister-in-law, and they were there to help me through it all. Like They helped me build myself, my self-esteem up, they showed me how to be, like they, they're just my absolute role models and I absolutely love them and can never thank them enough for everything that they've done for me. Um, because everything that's come across, like they've been there. And that's kind of when the hope was restored was when I was back with them and they were showing me that, you know, life can be better. This isn't all life can be, you know, you can have a life. I think Scarred Beautiful is a wonderful organization because nobody knows your backstory. Nobody knows the things that you've been through. And to find out that somebody has a similar story to you, it's it's comforting in a way to know that they have the same kind of feelings, they have the same kind of adjustment that they have to try to make too. It's not easy to get through, but once, you, once you're on the other side of it, my life's absolutely amazing now. Absolutely amazing. I got out of rehab July 5th, 2019. About three months later, I started working at Amazon full-time. Um, I'm still working there, still have the job there. Um, and yeah, during the pandemic, I worked through all of that because Amazon was one of the only things open. So we were constantly busy all the time. Um, but I've, I just, I feel so much healthier. I've made so many great friends. I've reconnected with so much family. Like me and my mom are on great terms now. Like, you know, we talk all the time. Um, and me and my little brothers, this actually me and my baby brother have matching tattoos. Like we're, it's just so nice to be reconnected back with your family and to have that connection back and those relationships back to build all that back is great. And my, um, my grandfather passed away like kind of recently, but he got to see me sober before he did. And that I'm really, I'm really happy he got to see that. When I was first getting clean, my brother actually came and showed me a picture of 
when him and his wife went to the Caribbean. And he was like, all right, Autumn, if you get clean, this is a goal that we can try to do. We can go take a cruise to the Caribbean, but you got to get there. <laughs> so that's one thing I'm looking forward to. We're eventually going to go to the Caribbean and go on a cruise. And I'm super excited for that. And I'm just excited to live life right now because before I was so trapped. And honestly, my life is kind of boring and I love it. <laughs> I love it. I go to work. I stay home. I play video games. I sleep, I play with the animals, I hang out with friends. Like it's it's fantastic. I love the boring normal mundane life. I don't need anything exciting. I've had enough excitement in my life. <laughs> I'm Autumn and I'm scarred beautiful.